call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock p.m. Whatever the date is today. 24th. 24th. Uh, motion to approve the minutes from October 3rd. Oh, well, remember Joyce. Oh, I, I got to. Yeah. Um, because we have, for the public, because we have one of our members who is geographically indisposed, um, all votes of the board will be subject to a roll call vote. We cannot make a vote without roll call, even the most minute votes. Like minutes. Like minutes. So, a motion to uh, approve the minutes from October 3rd. Don't move. Second. Roll call, Joyce. Taylor. Yes. Me, yes. Uh, so, so, so moved. Okay, comments from the public on anything that's not on the agenda? These guys are on the agenda. No, okay. Public hearing to amend the license to store flammable materials at 372 State Road, Whaley Mass, which is the, uh, the truck stop. Oh. And this is submitted by NEC OPCO, is that an I or a Roman? I think it's a one. 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 I'll read the legal notice. Okay, please. The select board of the town of Whateley will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 24th, 2018 at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Whateley Town Offices for Sandy Lane, Whateley, Mass. NEC Opco 1 Incorporated, 326 Clark Street, Worcester, Mass. Has applied for an amended license to store 17,000 gallons of gasoline and 19,000 gallons of diesel fuel at 372 State Road, Whateley, Mass. Application for the license is being considered under the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 48. And who's here representing NEC Opco? Yeah. Uh, Mark Smith. Okay. Um, my only question is, is this an increase or a decrease in the capacity that's currently there? Decrease of 2,000 gallons. Why? Just the, just the mix. You know, they, they uh, not right now, you know, you blend your regular and your super. There's not much super anymore. So I think they probably thought that going with two 12,000 gallon tanks um, was their, you know, best fit. So. So it's not a reflection of diminishing business. No, I think it's just the the mix uh, of the different fuels. Um, you, right now, they're they're going to have a twelve thousand gallon tank all by itself for regular, and then only a five thousand gallon compartment of one tank for premium. You know, just that's not a big big seller these days. Okay. So it's a reduction from four tanks to three tanks, right? Yeah, one of the um, three tanks is split into two compartments. Um, it's a 12,000 gallon tank with 7,000 gallons diesel and 5,000 gallons premium. And you're the owner of the tank? Is that no, I'm the engineer they hire to, to do this uh, the permitting form. As a matter of fact, uh, the different towns do it in different ways. Often when you do an amendment like this, when they just come up for their renewals, and so um, I missed the boat, I guess, uh, on this one, and I got informed that I, we needed to go through this process. So um, I, I prepare the plans for them. I, I run around and do a lot of permitting for them. And uh, so that's why I'm here tonight. So NEC Opco is, is the owner, and yeah. they also the operator? Yes. The, okay. Yeah, they took it over from FL Roberts. When did they do that? Um, I don't know exactly, but about two years ago. So, and this is a question more for Brian, and maybe it's not Jermaine, but NEC Opco is the owner of the fuel and the distribution of the fuel. Is it also the owner of the convenience store? They own the land, yeah. They own the land, you own the diner? Yeah. So you own everything? Or, yeah, NEC does, yeah. Any, yeah. When did that sale go through? Because our, our relationship with, according, because of the, this is background you may not know, the, the whole relationship with the traffic patterns, that was with FL Roberts. Yeah. So. That's when we renewed the license. Yeah, we covered they transferred the license about two years transferred ago. Transferred the license. Oh, we did? That's when yeah. I came up. Yeah, we transferred the license. I don't recall yeah. that. Okay. And did the, the, the traffic pattern transfer with the license, or how does that? 
or is that traffic pattern now need to be revisited? If it was made a condition of the license, then the license would have transferred with the conditions. Uh, yeah. License. Did we make that a condition of the license? I get this isn't necessarily germane to the tank, but yeah, it did when we I think when we transferred. Can we look into that? But there, it's, it's coming up again for renewal, right? In next month. Yeah, it's typically renewal is pretty much. Because I've been noticing that trucks are not obeying that, ab ab always abiding by that by that traffic flow, and they're actually exiting where they should be, okay. just entering. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's a sign here. I think that says exit. There, there, there may be a sign there, but it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that people are abiding by the sign. We can look no, at there's, that. There's, there's two exits for trucks. One is the northern closer one, and the other is Old State Road. And the one by the diner is supposedly cars that, only. That's my there. point, right? Yeah. It's but not being adhered to. I mean, I go by there on a regular basis. Yeah. Okay. Can we do a license for so? So that should be discussed. And just so you're aware, the, 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 the flow was designed when we granted a liquor license to the diner. And it was so that, you know, under the assumption that, you know, people are going to take advantage of the liquor license, we had a, 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 a better traffic flow of trucks versus cars, and the trucks were only allowed to exit the diner via Old State Road. Can we kind of go around behind? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or the exit to the north by the diesel yeah. tanks, but not the one adjacent to the diner. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and they're really, I mean, I'm not saying that every truck dismisses the sign, mm -hmm. but it seems to be happening more and more. So I just want to put that on out there that, and again, it's not germane to the, so. Joyce, what do you got? Well, I, I'd like to see the 2,000-gallon uh, uh, capacity that should run be made up for with some electric car charging stations. But again, that's not really germane to the, <laughs> to the uh, license here. I don't have any problem with uh, the license. It looks like they're actually improving the situation over there. So um, I, think, I, I think we can move along. Yeah. But if you do mention electric car charging stations for bus, that would be great. Cause I I think that'd be a good location for a, a bank of chargers. I couldn't agree more. I was going to mention it, but I thought it wasn't germane. So, you know, far be it from me to bring up something that wasn't germane. <laughs> so so all, the, all the excavation work that's happening there right now will return the, the site to what it was before. All yeah. The line, everything like yeah, it's um, going basically in the same location. Everything's going to the same location. They're not changing the grades. They'll just put it back basically like it was, new concrete, new paving. Wait, okay. When are you going to be done? Um, I, with the underground work and all that, I would say probably four weeks from now. Yeah, the problem they had is they, when they excavated everything and they were going to pipe where the gasoline pumps are in front of the convenience store, they found out the bottom of the canopy columns were, were all rusted away. So they had to take the canopy down and that's going to make things go a little longer. But, uh, and they can't. They have to get the canopy piers in before they can put the pumps back. So, okay. So, Brian, what do we have to do? We need a motion. Motion to accept. Motion to approve the uh, to approve. license amendment. Okay. That's requested. What well, Brian said. Uh, anyone want to make a motion? Uh, sure. I, I move that we approve the license uh, amendment. A second. All those in favor, Joyce. Yes. Fred. Yes. Me. Yes. All right, so we'll mail you a copy of this timeline. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. thank you. Scheduled appointments. Attorney Dick Evans for Harvest Incorporated to discuss a proposed marijuana retail establishment to be located at 424 State Road, which is the Sugarloaf Shops. Mr. Evans. Mr. Chairman, I'm Richard Evans. I'm happy to represent Harvest Inc. Uh, this is Joe Kachuri, the representative who uh, uh, Mr. Woloski met this afternoon. We had our community outreach meeting today at noon at the site and uh, had a good turnout, good discussion with folks. And we're here tonight to introduce our project to the Board of Selectmen and to ask we can get the, uh, the host community agreement in the works. Uh, I have taken the uh, host community agreement that you signed for uh, Urban Grown uh, on Christian Lane and just modified it to put the new names in. Um, and uh, I don't know if you want to sign it tonight, or, or we haven't signed it yet, but 
we'd like to get that in the works and answer any questions you may have about the project. It's going to be a, a retail marijuana, a licensed marijuana establishment in the Sugarloaf shops, uh, obviously tightly <coughs> regulated by the Cannabis Control Commission. And we will be back here, of course, seeking a special permit site by approval from the Planning Board, or from the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board in due course. Um, Joe, do you want to talk a minute? Do you have any questions about their operation? It's uh, basically a, a retail operation, similar to other similar other. Sets I've of got operations. a couple questions. Sure. Um, hey, I, I, I'm wondering how you picked the 12 noon because it's not exactly convenient to people who go to work on a daily basis. But I'm just kind of curious about that before I have. To. Well, it was, questions. we considered various times, and, and nothing seemed to be convenient for everybody, so oh, we never settled right. on that one. Um, how many people do you consider a good turnout? Oh, we had, what, nine or ten? Which is a and very that's good, a good turnout? That's a very, that's an excellent turnout. Yeah. But then they, you said you were at Greenfield, and we had, what, two or we something? We had two in Greenfield. <laughs> I had, I did a couple of community outreach meetings in Northampton in the last few weeks, and we right. showed up. Okay. So nine is a, it's a great showing. Um, my only question is, there's a lot of vacant space in the Sugarloaf shops. Where are we specifically talking about in the Sugarloaf shops? We're talking about 424, which is the northern end of the So where the final markdown was or whatever. That's right. That building. Yeah. The What's that building. The whole that side. That building. That, that, that red part. Building. So it doesn't incorporate to the south at all or the L. That's Yankee Candle. Or there's vacancy there as well, still. Oh, right. But it's across, there's a bridge connection. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. Joyce, what do you got? Um, I was um, just wondering, your companies, um, not from Massachusetts, right? Where are they headquartered? Uh, Arizona. Arizona. And how many states do you operate in at the moment? Uh, they operate in 15 states. They have some 97 dispensaries in those 15 states and they're rapidly growing. Expect to have over 100 in the next year and we'll probably go up to about 250 in several years. So where do you um, expect uh, the product yourself to be grown? It will be grown in Deerfield at the uh, facility now known as Pioneer Gardens, which they're anticipating uh, purchasing. You're the same company? Yes. So you'll grow well, your own? Well, it's an affiliated company. You'll grow your own That's material. Right. You won't That's right. be utilizing local growers. Well, we will be local growers. Okay. Yeah. But current local, like historically local. Well, yes, but 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 they're taking over Pioneer Gardens, but they're going to keep all the same employees. So it's not like new people coming in. Okay. New ownership, but not necessarily new workers. Exactly. On the ground. Exactly. Can I just can I speak a few minutes? Yeah, sure. sure. This is Joe Kajiri, who's a representative of the artist. Appreciate your time this evening. Um, I'm Joe Kajiri. I'm a founding partner with the company. I'm an engineer by trade. I'm also a commercial broker for 20 plus years. My role is I'm the national real estate director for Harvest. We're currently in 15 states. We currently have 97 dispensaries. And we should be somewhere around 152 by, say, the end of Q2 of, of 19. Our, our philosophy and our role is we only hire local. That's it. I just want to be very clear. That's from anywhere from architectural, engineering, construction, and permanent jobs. What we do do is if we find someone, we, when we start to do our interviewing, if we think that we have a managerial position that someone uh, has the skill set for, we'll take them to Arizona for maybe about a month and we run them through a training program. And a training program is, is Everybody who works for us, and even myself, had to go through an FBI background check. And so we take our, our skill level people and we try to incorporate them at a higher level. Every single employee, even if you just start day one, you have Blue Cross Blue Shield, Vision and Dental, and there's even a retirement package with us. So we try to come full circle with, it's a meaningful corporation. Currently we have about 700 employees and we'll be growing that number I can't tell you exactly much, but I'm sure we'll be over a thousand by next year. And so all of who's there now, we've had some preliminary conversation of all of the uh, employees that are there now to keep them, keep every single employee. And some of those will get some higher positions with higher pay. And, um, and I think the benefit package we offer is, uh, I believe it's, it's better than the package they have currently. With that said, we'll be hiring additional personnel 
for that site. And these are full-time jobs because what the skill level that we're gonna give you is we don't wanna lose you. So they're full-time for as long as we, we plan on being in the community. You know, we don't have an, an exit strategy. Um, retail jobs don't historically pay what other sectors are known to. Um, I don't want you to give away business secrets, but have, have and obviously Massachusetts is moving towards a, a, a higher minimum wage anyway. But I, I'm wondering what range of retail. We're not. We're above minimum wage. You are above oh, that, yeah. even for your retail workers. Yeah, yeah. But again, he, 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 whatever that entry level position is, I can tell you it's above minimum wage. But that person still gets Blue Cross Blue Shield, Vision Dental, and with the opportunity of having a retirement package. Okay. And where are you going to manufacture? Well, that's a good question. We're working that out now. Um, I have a I have a solution in Boston, um, and I'm working trying to work something out a little bit more Western Mass. But I that, do have a solution. Appreciate it. I'd love to have the opportunity to talk to you. I have no ideas. I'm just. <laughs> you know, if you're putting it on the table, if you're putting it on the table, I'm open to having that conversation. Okay, with you. that's great. Yeah. Oh, I, and if you, and just to carry the conversation further, that's. So let's talk about that for a brief second. If it's manufacturing, the jobs positioned there are 100 grand, 100 grand a year. Right. What, what do you mean by manufacturing? What are you going to? So what, let's let's take the mystery out of that a little bit. <clears throat> so cultivation, um, growing. So, so we call that uh, from seed to harvest, and then we take the bud. Manufacturers taking that bud, so you're taking, there's actually machinery, and the machinery is just, they're, they're tubular, and they're not very big. You, you know like a, 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 a acetylene tank, a, a tank that might have some certain kind of gas, it's like a tube like that. And they, they, under pressure, they squeeze out the, and extract the oils. That oil then is going into, this is where it becomes chemistry. That goes into where it's a, a centrifuge and extracted out, and then we'll even take the molecular structure to separate the THC from the CBD, so then you can actually create something that's without, without a psychotropic in it. So you can just have your pure CBD oils for tinctures, oils, uh, uh, topicals, so it depends. But it's, it's science, it's right. pure science. So because of that, the, the level of expertise we need is a higher level, so the pay rate is much higher. Well, I, I, I'm happy to sit down with you. I, I have been a proponent of, of the different elements of the, of the, of the pipeline of, of, of cultivation, manufacturing distribution for a long time, but it's not because I love the product, it's because I see economic development opportunities for this region. Um, Excellent. Otherwise, I don't, I don't. It's, there's no point to it in my mind. Um, so I, I'm happy to sit down if that's of interest to you to discuss that. Is there? They're actively looking for a space. Yeah, I get I mean, that. Yeah, you know, this I room. Get that. What's the? Will there? One of the concerns, and we live this concern with a local manufacturer that employs a lot of people, is the odor that emanates from cultivation, distribution, you know, the whole, the whole ball of wax. What's the aroma going to emanate from the retail facility or any manufacturing facility that might be, that might come online locally? So, and, and you can't say nothing because there's a company that said nothing a long time ago, and the neighbors would argue that they either didn't know what they were talking about or, <laughs> or were a little misleading. So I'm just curious what, what your argument, what your reaction would be. So from the cultivation side, when you're growing and when the bud starts to get to the point where you're gonna harvest, that's when it, the permeation of the odor is at its highest. That is the ultimate, and there's, without question, there's aroma, odor, whatever you want to call that. That's pure cultivation. So with the cultivation, we have, we've come up with solutions for what we're going to do there. There's many solutions for that to minimize that. So once you take that and you cultivate it, 
harvest it. it. It sits in a room for weeks to a month, depending on the strain. We grow 42 to 60 plus different strains of cannabis. So once that, once that you take about 68 to maybe 71% of the moisture out of that, once you do that, that odor is, whatever, you, whatever we're gonna label it, that minimizes to, there's maybe 10 to possibly 20% left of the residual of the odor, but the pungent is gone because it, you, you dried it out. That process, so that still exists. Once you package this and you're going to move it, so, so what we do is we take that bud, and I'm trying to give you a visual here, and you trim it. So you have all these flowers coming, and that, that all gets trimmed, so we separate the bud from the, from the leaf. Now all of our leaf, 100% of the plant is used, just by the way. There is no throwaway, because when we use that, we use that for the manufacturing. Because then you take even, even the smallest amount, because you can take that to an oil, then you can unify that because, through science, through chemistry. So that is now even minimized again. But once you take this and you, man and you put it in a, a heat seal package and you're gonna move it in, in quantity, I'm not gonna say you can't smell, I'm not gonna say that, but I can say it's really minimized now. Because once it's packaged, you're down to less than 5% of whatever the original odor is that potentially is left. If it's in this room, if you had a, a, a box of these pre seal you would probably smell it. But you wouldn't smell it in the hallway. You, might, you would come in the room and you would say, something's here. And you may not know. When you're in a dispensary, um, it's minimal. I'm not gonna say you don't smell, because that would be a false statement. But now you're less than 5% of what it originally started. You may be down, again, less than 5%. That's all I'm gonna say. So I gotta believe the manufacturing does have some element of smell. Very little, because as soon as it goes to the oil, it's zero. Okay. What, what is, so just to be clear, what is the, the smell is really off of the raw material. When you take the raw material and you're carrying it to the oil, it's gone. You know, and then we capsulize it, we put them in uh, little cartridges, or we take it to a tub, it's gone. Jonathan, that's, that's come up as, I'd say it's a big issue with planning board and CBA, because I've been at the meetings and there's another, another place planning on growing it in town and that was the first but one of the concerns was the the smell and 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 some the noise and i think both boards have asked specifically how are you going to control that just don't tell us you're going to put a fan there and blow it outside that's not acceptable we wanted to know or they wanted to know two boards what equipment are you actually going to use to eliminate or, or ameliorate the, the smell and what's the noise level the other issue was the noise level of that equipment if it's running 24 7 and we got one business that's planning in a residential area if it's running 24 7 what's the noise levels well we don't know well we asked the, the boards asked to find out and give us a, a noise level for that equipment if you're going to if that's how you're going to dissipate the smell so that's being discussed at the, the other two board meetings uh, and they have continued, they haven't, either each board has continued their hearing process on it, so they haven't made any decisions yet. I think there's some coming up, so next week, Brian, or early November. Okay, it's a so, site, so, site inspection on Saturday. Site inspection on Saturday, so, yeah, that is a concern, the major concern is the, the smell for that. Joyce, what do you got? Anything? Um, I think he, he answered a lot of it. I anticipated some of the questions I had. Um, I, uh, I think now that you've you know, made your case on uh, frontier community access television, I'm sure somebody with a manufacturing suitable site will be in touch right away. So Dan, get this up on the FCAT site real quick, okay? So I, I, I brought a, my laptop if you're interested in seeing, just start our, just, so we brand, we try to have a branding feel and look in our dispensaries. And how we did this, just if you if you mind, just a, a quick second here, is we were trying to figure out how do you capture 21 to 91. And the, the way we looked at this was Apple stores seem to capture that in the most um, easiest fashion. So we designed our dispensaries with a branding feel, like a Starbucks. They all have a similar feel. So. Ours is similar to similar to what an Apple store looks like. It's open, it's warm, it's got light wood, 
There's, you'll not, all you see with us is the word harvest. You don't see anything else. You don't see, there's no Bob Marley, there's no joints in the winter. We don't believe in that. There's no on-sign flashing lights. We don't do any of that. That's, that is our standard protocol nationally. And being in 15 states currently, um, that, that is just who we want to be. So you, people who are looking for our, the medicine or our product, they'll find us. We don't need to be advertising. There's websites and there's app, apps on your phone for just that nationally. Well, yeah, uh, possibly I misunderstood, but I believe the odor issue is most noticeable during the harvest time, is that? It's is noticeable, that? It's, mo it's, it's at its highest when you're about to cultivate, when you're about to harvest it. Okay, so that issue of odor is an deer field issue. Right, right, right. I that's, that. yeah. right. So the odor, what about during the manufacture? It's, so at that point, I'm not, there's no such thing as zero, all right? That, that, yeah. That, right. It's, it's at a low percentage. So I'm, I'm of the opinion that when, when you harvest it, that's at its highest pungent. After it cures itself, which I said it takes about 68% to 72%, give or take, of the moisture out, it also takes a lot of that pungentness out. So you're, you're roughly maybe 20 some percent, 20, 25% of what's left. Once you trim it and once you go through all of that process, you take it down again. And then by the time you go to the manufacturing side of it, it's so minimal that once you press it through the, it's just a press, all it is, it's just under pressure, there's no, there's no, there's no mechanical noise to it. It's just pressure. That's all it is. And I can bring you in. I can show you what the tube looks like. Um, you're less than five percent of where, where, wherever you started. So you can see the the issue that we we would have would be if there's any odor at the retail site escaping into the community around there, and then issues from those residents coming back to them but if that's not happening anywhere else then we, so, we shouldn't expect it here there was a large group that that came from deerfield that you may know some of these people they came and visited to our facility our corporate office met our ceo met our chairman of the board they toured our cultivation they toured a handful of our dispensaries and they toured i would encourage you to speak to them um, they're in town and um, they, they came and, I don't want to speak for them, but I'll let, I'm, I'm encouraging to speak with them. So you, they saw everything from, from what we call seed to sale. <clears throat> they saw how we start, how we start with plant, from the seed to the grow, to, they went to our cultivation that's state of the art, and then they went to our dispensaries. And they stood outside, they stood inside, and you know these were husband and wives, these were all a mix, all from local community. What was this at Arizona? Yes. They came to Deerfield went to office. Arizona? They came to our corporate office. In Arizona? Yes. From Deerfield? Yes. When? You flew them down? Um, I think it was right local, around. I mean, family? I'm sorry? There are local officials that went from Deerfield to work? Uh, no, people. People that, that were, they wanted to, they were investigating into our company to see if they wanted it in their neighborhood. They were investigating to see if there was a, a business opportunity. So they came out. And then they, they presented to uh, Deerfield. Okay. Well, um, I make it a practice not to vote on things that I just have, have, have taken into consideration. It's just not the way I, I personally yeah, do it. Yeah, the agreement subcommittee will have to take a look at it. Yeah, and, and the person that you see on the computer is our resident host committee expert. Or, uh, and, so, and so I would defer to her to create a schedule for reviewing what you've done here, compare it to what we've done with, with uh, and you'll forgive me, I don't remember the name of the, of the organization off the top of my head. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll go from there. My concern is to make sure that there's always money for education um, across the region um, at, the public, at the public and private school level. If uh, uh, if, if the private schools are interested um, and to make sure that we have revenue coming into the town based upon these. So, Joyce, can I throw that into your lap and we can move on to... Uh, should, should we wait till we hear from planning and zoning on this before we sign 
we're not going to sign. We just. No, I, I know we're not signing today, but eventually when we sign, shouldn't we wait to hear from them? Um, I think the hosting agreement doesn't could, could be signed either before or right. after or right. after it. If he doesn't get through the planning board, then you know it, it won't happen. I mean, there's many hurdles, and right. the hosting right. agreement they're separate. Done. It, it, so, it does need to be signed, I believe, before they can submit an application. That's to exactly right. So we would it's not more than two. Typically, it's done beforehand. Oh, okay. We don't need the special permit from the zoning board or the site plan approval until later. Right. But we do need the host community agreement uh, now before we can even submit the application to the CCC. Okay. All right. So, so I'll be in touch. But Brian will be in touch based upon his conversations with Joyce. Um, and any conversations you have with Joyce will be through this medium because right, she's, yeah, she's we'll, really we'll geographically until indisposed. Until December, it'll be a uh, video conference. Okay. Perfect. That Questions perfect. on you guys' end? I'm, I'm good. And if you need any, I do have some photos. I do have things when it's appropriate time. I'll be happy to send forward. Okay, and if you want to reach out to Brian for my contact information, right? I can. Do the I same. gave you my card earlier. Yes. If, if you if want to you, sit down, I'm, I'm happy to sit down. If you can, if you can send me, and then you maybe we. Can, I, I I'm good with anybody or all of it. So we, we can, can't meet together unless it's a posted meeting. So I'm happy to do it. Uh, then I'll put you two in touch. How okay. That? Great. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, what discussion on uh, municipal aggregation plan prepared by Colonial Power to DP, DPU? DPU. This is the this is the aggregation plan that's been posted on the the town website probably for about three weeks now. Um, the next step in the process, I I did not receive any any comments from anybody on it, um, so this would be. Uh, the next step is that the, the select board vote to approve the municipal aggregation plan, which would be submitted to DPU for public hearing and approval. Joyce was on a very uh, uninforming call yesterday about the process. Um, I don't know if there's anything to, if you want to add anything, Joyce, but. Well, it was, it was clear that you know, we've got to, we should send this along. Um, and that they don't have a lot of other roadblocks in the way that people have been jotting on it and crossing T's unbeknownst to us, and uh, it's moving along. Is there, did you get a sense of timing, either of you, in terms of when next steps would happen? They didn't tell us much at this meeting about um, a timeline. Um, but I got the sense that, like, the meeting where we would actually have to you know, sit down and decide things. Uh, you know, we, we send a representative and they show us, you know, the, the actual uh, offers. Uh, that's probably not happening until uh, after January 1st. Okay. Yeah, that's my sense. Yeah, because my, my they, they could come and surprise me and say it's next week, but I don't think that, I didn't seem like the timeline is listed. That would require DPU to act really fast on. And that's not on their DNA. Sure. Um, no, they can do that, but they could, in theory. But m my concern is only that all of a sudden these meetings are going to start to pop up when people's schedules around the holidays are right. a little tight. So, yeah. okay. Um, so we want yeah, Brian's a motion to to approve the municipal the municipal aggregation plan that's prepared by Colonial Power as posted on the town website. Joyce, you want to make that motion? I uh, move that we approve the power plan. The, um, sorry, <laughs> I'm just late here. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, approve the municipal aggregation plan uh, prepared by Colonial Power. The one that's been on our website is going to be next submitted to Department of Public Utilities. I would second that. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me? Aye. Approved. Legal documents for 219 Christian Lane, lot number one, for a closing to be held on October 31st, 2018. What, pray tell, is this about? That's the that's the Blue School, uh, the Blue School lot deed. Yeah. The closing is scheduled for October 31st. So we need to sign the deed. This is the license if you want to sign that. That's what the Whitney Trucks did. Wait, I'm sorry. This is something. I'm catching up. This is the truck stop license that we approved. This is? Fred has the deed, yeah. I'm sorry. And then this is? 
Wait, where are that? Oh, okay. I'm catching up from no, the okay. so that we can get these guys out of here. And we can fill out my title and everything. Mm -hmm. Unless this one? That's the, that's the closing. So the closing for that is scheduled for October 31st, um, which brings up the, um, the license agreement. And if we want to pursue that license agreement with Mr. O'Bear. Remind us of the license agreement. The license to use the ball field until he needs to. I mean, he was saying he was going to, it was going to be a winter project. So we would just get the pleasure of maintaining the field for the next couple months. Which doesn't get maintained. Doesn't. Between now and they mow the, so they don't mow the field done. What's that? They're probably done mowing that. They're field. probably done mowing that. I mean, they yeah. could mow it one more time, but I know the the I know the diamond won't be maintained. Uh, it would start to be maintained as the spring hits, so that the crabgrass that grows in the dirt doesn't start to take wings. Yeah. Um, I, I have no problem signing it because then we can always discontinue it. If, I mean, we have, as we discussed before, the usage of that field is predicated on availability of parking. We're not going to use that field if people have to park up and down River Road and Christian Lane just because it, it's just not practical. There are no sidewalks. There are, you know, any number of things. But let's reserve our, our access for as long as we can, and people have to figure out, we have to figure out a replacement part at some point. But I would encourage signing it for the time being. Okay, but uh, you know, we talked about this a meeting or two ago, uh, and I, I thought one of our concerns, and I think with Jonathan, you said that you wanted to know more than, that only gives, what, a 60 or 90 day notice when we can use the field. And you wanted more notice so you could schedule for next year's games and events there. Uh, and I think you said 90 days was enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I don't know how signing that agreement is going to solve that problem. I, Fred, I guess I don't know how it solves that problem either, but I'm not sure we have any other solution at this point. If we can't I mean, let this. I, yeah. wanna, I mean, ideally, yeah, you get a lot of notice, but that would sort of be a deal breaker right. for. For, the, for this particular project. So we, I think we said, yeah, that'd be nice, but I don't think it's practical. Right. right, exactly. So are we gaining anything by? Well, we have to, if we don't sign it, we don't have access to it at all. By signing it, we have, we keep holding some of the cards. Uh, okay. I don't see the downside in signing it. I really don't, otherwise we don't have access to it at all. We know that. That's And that goes yeah. until he starts construction or activities in there there. Yeah, to know all that. Yeah. Right. And and you know what? Maybe he gets done and the parking becomes available again. Who knows? But but let's keep our let's keep our options open for the time being. Okay. So I would, do we need to make a motion or no? Motion to accept, uh, sign, accept and sign the, um, what? License agreement. The license agreement for the field adjacent to 219 Christian Lane. Second. All those in favor, right. Joyce? I have a right. question. Does that, does that apply to both parcels because that field is on both parcels, ours and Frontier. And does that pertain just to our parcel? And because the, the main portion of that field, I think, is on Frontier's parcel. It uh, is? Yes, closer to the building. The outfield is on our parcel. Our parcel is the second one. But the infield is, the infield is part of our parcel as well. Frontier. So we own very little of this whole thing. Right. The outfield. 
And so I'm asking Brian, is it, it what parcel does that apply to? All right, let's put this off until then. Well, we got to sign this thing. So can we I sign this after the closing? Again, I don't see the I don't see the downside in signing this thing right now. If we don't sign it, we do, we lose all access in perpetuity. Right. I don't know right. if it's clear. I think Frontier has already kind of signed away their half of the property, so the access to the fields. I don't think which fraction of it sits on which property is really uh, a relevant thing. Uh, I so. Don't have it. Yeah, but we don't we don't own that parcel. It's either Frontier or out there. If if you know, I don't think it's relevant, Fred. We're signing uh, our piece. Well, I, I guess then I'm at, I'm at, I'm at to clarify what what does this we sign this agreement? What parcel does that pertain to? I don't know that whether it's relevant or not, Joyce. I, I guess I'd like to know. Does that pertain to both parcels, or or just the ball field wherever it's at? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it talks about the ball field. Um, but we're signing it, and we're the only owners of the second parcel, not the correct. first. Right. It, he, he can give us a license to whatever he wants. Um, I mean, I, if we want to make a motion to, to approve the license agreement um, that covers one, uh, both parcels, then we can have town council modify it to reflect that and then I can have um, once it's prepared then we can have you guys sign it. Are you okay with that Fred? Yeah. Okay so sure. moved. If it's if it's clarified yet yeah, on here what parcel. So moved with that clarification. All those in uh, second? Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me? Aye. Um, recommendation for municipal representative for the Frontier Regional Contract Negotiations. We will have another meeting be between now and November 13th is a school committee meeting. Um, we did a little research, had some conversations between the, the four towns and there is a single municipal representative based on, um, I don't remember what the CMR is, but it's the Department of Education regulations that set that. So we get to select one person from the four towns, and it's it's the select board. Well, it's a chief executive officer, so it would be the select board chairs that, according to the statute, would attend that school committee meeting on November 13th and vote to elect a single representative. And I'm told that in the past, the towns have identified someone beforehand, and it wasn't really a formality. Um, we have, I've heard of three different people who are interested. Um, Trevor McDaniels from Deerfield, Phil Cantor from Conway, and Scott Bergeron from Sunderland. So, it's, uh, it really comes down to if, if the board wants to put somebody forward or we favor somebody or we don't favor somebody. Um, I will probably not be in town on the 13th to go to that meeting. Okay. There's a possibility that I'd be back, but I, I wouldn't put any money down on that. Um, I would be in favor of, for, for reasons that I've stated previously about someone who does not have current ties to school committees because nothing against these, they're great guys, but there's got to be a different a different lens, and so I would advocate for Scott. That's my same thoughts, my same reason I was talking. Brian. That's not, that's not that's, all a criticism on yeah, Phil or yeah. I, I agree with you, Brian. Yeah, I, I mean uh, Jonathan. Yeah, that was my thought as well, and that would be my recommendation for for Scott for his, for his Joyce, do you have any comment? Um, I don't know the guy from Conway at all. I know Trevor only a little, but I, I know Scott from when our kids went to Frontier together. <laughs> so so he's, he's the one I know the best. Um, and kind of like John said, no offense to anybody else. Um, I bet all, any of them. 
but if I had to pick one out now because I don't know, the SAT and it's multiple choice, you have to pick one, yeah. I would pick out Scott. Okay. Okay. I, I would, do we make a motion or no? Sure. I make a motion that we, um, as a board, cite our preference for Scott Bergeron to be the representative from the, the municipal representative to, to uh, represent Frontier in these negotiations. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, aye. And I, and I really do think that we as a board, and I'm happy to sign it as the chair, should send a letter requesting our elected officials to visit this CMR um, and, and, and rewrite it so that municipal officials who have the fiduciary responsibility for our towns um, to have more representation at these, negotiation, uh, at these negotiations than we currently do. Um, Again, I'm not saying take away from, from school district representation. I'm saying add to ours because we're the ones who have to answer to the voters when it comes to town meeting and, and a budget. And only having one representative just makes us seem so insignificant. <clears throat> so I, 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 would, I would like you guys' permission to have Brian craft that letter and I'll sign it. That sounds reasonable. Okay, it's fine with me. Okay. All right, new business, and we've got 10 minutes. Review license fees for 2019. Is that really going to be possible in this time frame? I think so. It's right here. Yeah. Oh, it's small. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is the same, it's the same as last year. Um, Amy updated this, talked to these towns, and right, let me what get other there. towns have. Um, so. I just, uh, I have no problem with the, the I'm just curious, what are the, the two that the common particular and in holder license? How many do we have of them? Just one of each? No, you do have more than one of each. The, well, the in holder one, I think we have one. But the particular common license. Particular. The common particular is if you prepare food and, and have on site seating. So, rough, how many do we have? All of our restaurants. We mm -hmm. in. Tom Stockton, Tom Fins. Yeah. Um, you guys probably know more than that. The, co the cooperative auction across the street is one. Um, the Chesnex is one. Chesnex. So. Okay. Preparing food and seating. Preparing food and having on-site. Oh, because this is not just liquor. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, you know these prices look reasonable compared to our surrounding communities so i would make a motion to accept these renewals okay second all, all those in favor joyce aye fred aye uh me aye discuss letter addressed to representative Kulik requesting an amendment to bill house 4547 will the select board request the following amendment be made to 4547 Striking out line six, figure 70, and inserting in place thereof the following figure 69. Yeah. The, That's an age? Yeah, the attorney for um, the Senate asked for that amendment. When we submit, when we submit requests for um, special legislation, there's language that um, only allows amendments to the legislation at the request of the select board. So whenever an, on a small edit needs to be made, it has to come from, from us. And, and why are we changing from 70 to 69? The Is that like a typo to start with? I, I, think, I think so. The preceding language um, would have allowed um, him to serve essentially um, he, a day before he turned 71. So oh. it needs to say 69. Oh, so. So that and why do we have a problem with 71 day before you turn 71? State law board? doesn't allow. Oh, state law doesn't allow. Okay. Doesn't allow okay. Past 70. Um, okay, that's done. Discuss and vote to award contract for the manganese filtration project. The bid opening got changed to Friday, so we don't have anything. All right, um, strike that. Strike that. Additional select board appointments for fiscal year 2019. 
Housing Committee, one year term, Fred Orlowski, Catherine Rogi, Richard Tilburg, and Fred Barron, Housing Trust, with a question mark for some reason. Fred so, Orlowski. Yeah, we need, uh, this didn't happen the first time we appointed these people. We need to set a term of years. Two of these people need to be appointed for two years, and two need to be appointed for one year. Do you get a recommendation from the chair? There are staggered terms. Um, no. Okay, then I would suggest that two for two years. Before we can wait. Two for two years would be Fred and Catherine, and two for three years would be Richard and Fred, simply because that's the order of the list. I didn't know that. Two for two years and two for one year. No, for three years it says. Two for two years and two for one year. Oh, is that one? one? Oh, I'm sorry, I look like a three, I apologize. Okay. So Richard and Fred would be one year, and Catherine and Fred would be two years. And again, we didn't get any, any guidance, so. And there is, a vacancy for the housing trust. If anybody's interested, please contact me. It's a five member board or Richard Tilburg. Okay, who is the chair? Yeah. Community Preservation Committee, only two members, Alan Sanderson Jr. and John Devine. That are up for. That are up, okay. Uh, make a motion to accept, to accept those appointments as stated. Second. To all those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me, aye. Massachusetts Downtown Initiative Grant, what is this, Brian? Um, this is the grant, it's due November 9th, so if you'll allow us to uh, move forward on it, uh, it's a grant for technical assistance up to $15,000. Um, and the, the, the idea that I had was to work on, or, or to get assistance with some type of wayfinding for the town um, that will help people find the different destinations in different parts of towns. So signage? Um, They'll create, it, it, it's, it's a planning grant, so they'll go through and they'll, they'll do the design and um, branding and stuff like that with the committee that, that uh, the select board would put together. So my, my only question would be, this is planning, what's the cost gonna be for implementation? Because planning without implementation is sort of a useless intellectual exercise. I'm not sure how much it would cost for, for science, if we were to go through the, with the signage. But we don't. We, we already have signs on well, on State Road that I understand what the state has to approve to allow businesses to put signs on there. I don't know how many more you would put on State Road or even in Waitley. I, I guess they have to be limited to Waitley. You're not going to put one on exit uh, I-91 directing people to nope. Waitley in five miles down the road. No, we no. we should, but no, we probably can't. You probably can't won't. Win. So. Um, I don't know ways we can put them on five to ten. Yeah. Well, I mean, if 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 they want us if they want us to do this on our behalf and we'll be involved, no harm. Well, I'll I'll say from a personal experience when I when I first started here in driving up five and ten, I had no idea what was in Waitley because there were no signs direct. I there was a there's a there's a sign for the Waitley Inn. Yeah, I didn't right. know I didn't know Chester Plain existed and beautiful views and what was up there. I had no idea. Um, I didn't know where the farm stands were. I, I had no idea how to get around. I didn't know the, the hiking trails in West Waitley. Okay, I, I'm, I'm fine with this. Um, I think it's a good idea. I would and move, we, uh, move ahead with that. Good motion good. choice. I'll, yeah, that. Um, second. Pass the gathering, we have five minutes. Yeah, second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, aye. UMass Cost of Community Services Study? What's yeah, that? we have an offer from uh, from UMass to do a Cost of Community Services Study that would look at, um, well, what it says, the cost of community services uh, broken out based on the type of land use. There's no uh, cost for us to do it other than maybe some time to, to pull together the information. To, this to might fall under careful what uh, what you decide you want to learn. Yeah. But. And my so I, I move we, uh, we cooperate with the UMass student and get some information. That's fine, I second that. Again, one of my concerns, what, what are we gonna do with this, I mean? Uh, we'll figure that out later. No um, harm, no foul. Okay, and, and the information is all, uh, is all electronic copies, or is this all hard copy that we need to spend time to reproduce 
I believe most of the information we have electronically. Most is electronic. All right, well, it's in Scott's lap, so um, since he's the one who recommended this. So I make a motion, or did Joyce, did you already make a motion? Yes. Second, all those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, aye. Rural Commonwealth letter request. We have requests from uh, this group called Rural Commonwealth. Um, but essentially, it, there's a couple recommendations that they have at the, the bottom of this email here. Uh, essentially, what they want are, are letters of support sent to the state or letters of recommendation sent to the state that, that have the objective of increasing the amount that towns are paid for state owned lands. Waitley's, you compared to some of the other towns in Western Massachusetts, I think Waitley has a I think it's somewhere around less than 10% of our land is state owned. Some communities have 50% or more. And the payments they get from the state are, are according to them, low. And it doesn't allow them to, to have as much taxable land as, as everybody else does. And I assume that rural commonwealth.org backslash research, research backslash parks and restitution is where we would find the data that they're using to come up with these recommendations? Yeah. Um, I don't know that there's, I don't know that this is time sensitive. No, I, well, I, having just looked at it, I, there's no way I'm going to vote for it right now. So I would suggest that we do our homework and then bring it back on a future agenda. How do you guys feel about that? That sounds fine to me. Fred? Do we, do we have the copies of the letters they wanted to sign? Um, oh, the sample letters? Yeah, I think, I, I think they're on the email. I can get those to you guys. So, okay. Yeah, it's not on the email you sent us, but it's on the email they sent him. It might be on email, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, we can Let's do our homework. Oh, yep, there's attachments. The okay. okay. Um, I'm looking at a letter here. Is there, unless you want to mention this, or uh, from Judy Marklin? Yep, just that resignation letter from the Municipal Building Committee and Implementation Committee, which I didn't know. I still don't know what that does. But. Okay. Well, we have one apparently. So, um, and okay. That, well, we should um, thank Judy for incredible service yeah. as part of that project, um, and she's been great. So, but we have to accept it, I guess. Um, unless you have anything, I have a question. A couple about a month ago, I know. Got, right? um, about a month ago, we talked about you calling DOT asking why the traffic light at exit 24 is no longer on the camera but is now on a timer that is a virtual disaster in terms of tra traffic flow yeah have you made that call and have you gotten any response i have not made that call um let me check with keith because i think he has some additional information about that okay about when it was changed i know i talked to him about it after that meeting because they, you literally sit there and there's nobody for miles. I, I, I could say what, what I've heard and, and seen on, on TV uh, and in the newspaper that the state is doing work on I-91 and exits 21, 2, 3, and 4 are being closed and opened at various times of the day. So they could complete work on the, on the exits in 91. So I'm thinking that that's the reason the signal timing is is not current or the way it used to be because it's changing based on what exits they open and close. So yeah, you can call Brian, but uh, I think you're going to get that answer. It's under it's in a construction zone, and we're we're adjusting to accommodate try to accommodate everybody. Okay, I'm not sure that's a really good can. answer, but maybe we'll, well get that. Uh, All right, could you make that? Follow the key. Okay. Pass the OT. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, aye. 